To begin with, we're going to be looking at electric charge. Now, it's impossible to have electricity of any sort without electric charge. Electricity is defined in terms of electric charge. As we can see, electricity can produce some rather spectacular effects. So, electricity, by definition, describes the movement of little electrically charged particles. By particles, I just mean little tiny entities. We usually have lots of them when we look at an electric phenomenon. We can explain electric phenomena with either electrostatics, which means stationary electric charges, or electrodynamics, which means moving charges. Static means stationary, and dynamic means moving. So how exactly do we measure electric charge? That might be a bit of a tricky one. We can't use kilograms, we can't use meters, and we can't use seconds. We can't say something like, this plastic comb has two kilograms of electric charge on it. It wouldn't make sense. The comb already has a mass, it already has a length, and it's already existing for a number of seconds. So we can't use any of these units to measure electric charge. So we're going to need a new unit to measure this fundamental quantity of electric charge, something that we haven't used before. What we will measure it in is coulombs. Algebraically, we represent electric charge by a lowercase q. So, in the same way that we use L for length and we measure it in meters, or T for time and measure it in seconds, we're going to use Q for charge and measure it in coulombs. Now, electric charge can either be positive or negative. So we can have an object with an electric charge of positive one coulomb or an electric charge of negative one coulomb, that sort of thing. Now, when an electric charge passes through a circuit, we can think of it as a stream of tiny little particles, tiny little things that are moving. And each of these little particles has an electric charge. And so when all these millions and millions of tiny particles are moving through a wire, that's what creates the electric current in a circuit. We measure electric current, that is the movement of the charged particles, in amperes. Algebraically, we represent it with a, an uppercase I. So charge is lowercase q and it's measured in coulombs and current that's the flow of charge, is measured with uppercase I in amperes, or sometimes just amps for short. Now, when an electric charge is moving through a wire at a rate of exactly one coulomb per second, as we can see in this diagram, this is what we call one ampere, or one amp. So this is how the terms relate to each other. Uh, if we want, we can write an equation to represent this. Electric current, I, equals the change in electric charge, delta Q, divided by the change in time, delta T. So if we were to graph the electric charge over time, then the slope of the graph, rise over run, change in charge over change in time, would give us the current flowing at that point in time. Now, it turns out that we can't get arbitrarily small charges. That is, we can't pick a charge and get a charge that's closer to zero than the first charge. We can do this for a lot of charges. We can say that if we want to get closer to zero than one coulomb, all we need is half a coulomb. If we want to get closer to zero than half a coulomb, all we need is a quarter of a coulomb. But here's the thing. There is a smallest possible charge that we can't get any smaller than we can't have half of this value. So this value is called E, or the elementary charge, and it has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. If we were to write it out in full, we would need 19 zeros before the 1.6, so it's a very, very small amount of electric charge indeed. Uh, this is the electric charge on an electron, which is one of the constituents of the atom. The proton, which is another constituent of the atom, has the same charge, but instead of the proton having a negative charge, it has a positive charge. All electric charges are just little units of this charge all added together. That is, all electric charges are multiples of the elementary charge. 
if you have exactly one coulomb, that's actually a whole bunch of elementary charges added up together, billions and billions of little elementary charges, until we reach a charge of one coulomb. Electric charges arise when an object has more electrons than protons, or vice versa, that is, more protons than electrons. If they have the same amounts, then the charge will cancel out. So when the numbers of each particle are exactly equal, the object will have no net charge, because every proton that has a charge of positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 is cancelled out by an electron that has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the power 19. So all electric charges are due to an imbalance between the number of protons and the number of electrons in a material. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about electric charge and electric current. Let's go on to some questions to see if you've got it all down.